Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, March 29th, 2019. And this is our weekly look back at last week's eBay auction results. And we'll take a look at some things that are coming up this week. It was a pretty good week. Uh, a lot of good things sold. There were some surprising results. And uh, we'll get through them. Uh, we, we are still um, working on the uh, post-auction uh uh, look at the uh, sales at Asia Week. Uh, we got a little behind this week, but there were some things going on that we had to attend to. But uh, we're getting there and should be out uh, uh, probably Monday or Tuesday, I think. It looks like we're sort of on schedule for that. All right, so let's have a look and see how things did. Like I said, it was a pretty good week. Um, one of the things that came up that were on the newsletter was this. There was a pair of uh, uh, very nice white jade thumb rings mounted in silver. Uh, you see these fairly often around the 1920s or so. Um, and before that, they would take uh, old pieces of jade and work them into other objects. Uh, these were made into salts. Um, here are the bottoms. They were done in China uh, because thumb rings back then, frankly, weren't that heavily co uh, collected. Uh, they were they were fairly common, and uh, uh, people uh, didn't know what to do with them, and they tried to sort of add value to them by finding other uses. There were even companies in the United States that uh, would uh, convert uh, uh, ch Chinese objects and bits into table objects, desk sets, and all kinds of things. And in this case, uh, uh, salts. They're missing their covers. These would have had uh, silver covers on them originally. Uh, those are long gone. But the, the jade uh, on these two pieces are, is quite good quality. And uh, they did pretty well. They brought $1,225 for the pair. All right. Those are nice. Those are nice. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Um, Always when you're in antique stores, look around and make sure that there isn't a piece of uh, Chinese art that's been worked into something and it's sort of camouflaged in plain view, as they say. All right. And then on to this. This was a nice piece of uh, 19th, uh, 18th century, rather, uh, Peking enamel on, um, on uh, copper. Here's a picture of the back of it. Is a side shot of it. This was a fairly big one. It was 40 centimeters in diameter. Had a little bit of wear up in here, but very good enameling. The enameling on this was quite good. Uh, enameling on copper can be really be really be superb. And uh, relative to, to, to porcelain, it's 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 way underpriced. I think I think it's a great thing to collect. A lot of it was made for export also. And this brought $2,159. This was from Migalari had this. Uh, it was a good-looking good looking example, though. And as I said, it was 40 centimeters, which is, which is quite large. Uh, that's about uh, 16, 15, 16 inches in diameter or so. All right, so a good, good big piece. And uh, it wasn't all dented up. These are very prone to denting. So uh, if you find one that's intact, you, that's pretty good luck. All right, and then onto this. This was a nice looking 18th century uh, blue and white uh, terrain. Uh, good quality all the way around. It was in nice shape. I didn't see any repairs or damage to it in any way, but uh, beautifully colored with the bamboo trees, flowers, peonies, and so forth. Here's a picture of the bottom. Very typical 18th century uh, foot rim here. Uh, nice and smooth, has sort of that creamy oatmeal color. You don't see any turning lines like you see on reproductions. If you see those r ridges running around the foot, um, they're very thin, but there'll be multiple rows of ridges. It generally indicates it's a, a pretty modern thing. Um, here's a picture of the underside, uh, inside the lid, rather. And uh, it, it did okay, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't a crazy price at all. $431 for a nice looking piece of uh, porcelain. And uh, I think the seller, uh, this is Bigelary again, I think he's right on the date, right about 1780, latter part of the 18th century. But good porcelain, that's a nice piece of porcelain. All right, and then on to this, the uh, sweet meat set in its case. Um, these do turn up. Those of you who have been around for a while have seen them before. But this is a nice old case. Look at the nice dovetail work on the ends. Good quality wood all the way through. Um, he should have shown a, a better picture of the box itself. This was a nice piece of uh, uh, woodwork. And uh, with, with all the pieces inside, it looked to be in good shape, uh, mid-late 19th century. And uh, it did great, just the, just the same. It brought $2,026. Um, these are uh, pretty, pretty desirable. Uh, people in China love these. And uh, it, sold, it was sold by a dealer we'd not seen before in San Antonio, Texas. But, uh, good on them. They did well with that. But it wasn't an overpayment. That was a nice set, nice complete set. I like that. 
and then on to the bronze incense burner on that wild stand. Uh, this was a pretty nifty thing. It had been polished at some point, um, uh, which they often did. A lot of these, a lot of bronzes, uh, early bronzes come out of the market. And, and uh, up until, you know, 70 years ago, people used to polish them all the time to keep them shiny. And um, this was a nice one. And uh, it brought $1,571. All right, there's a Jundi mark on it, probably 18th century, could have been a little older, but uh, it did fine nonetheless. And I think the stand was a great value added uh, aspect to it. I, you know, to me, that stand added probably, you know, four or $500 to the value uh, anyway. All right, so maybe it wasn't that much. All right, and then on to this. This was a seller we came across up in the Lakes region of New Hampshire, I had this. This was a nice uh, uh, Chinese framed fan, uh, uh, 19th century, but very good quality all the way around. And, and the good part of this, and, I, and somebody obviously looked at it, it was it had two two aspects to it. It was a, it was a fan with figures, and then in back of that was a, a nice gilt um, uh, fan uh, uh, sheet uh, loaded with calligraphy and script. All right, there's a nice detail of the faces, as you can see. It's good brushwork, nice nice facial work. Uh, good, good work on the robes. Nice colors all the way around, and um, the addition of the script was really quite good. All right, that this made this a really attractive package, and uh, there's a lot of good material. I said last week there's a lot of good material in Maine, um, here in New England on the coast especially. There's also a lot of good material in the New Hampshire Lakes region, up around Winnipeg, Squam, uh, Squam Lake. In that area, there's a lot of wealthy people up there that started going back in the 20s and uh, even before, and they started bringing their stuff up. And these brought this brought $998, which I think was a very reasonable buy. That was a good, good lot, nice lot. So if somebody out there got it, good on you, all right? And um, then there was this. There were the bronzes. Last week was a good week for bronzes. There were some nice ones up. Um, this was a seller that uh, we keep an eye on. I believe he's in Poland. And uh, he tends to oil his bronzes before he puts them up, which is not unusual. Um, there are a number of English dealers that do the same exact thing. Um, but uh, this was a good pear-shaped bronze. Uh, to my eyes, it, it looked to be a, a, a late 18th, but more likely a 19th century bronze. But uh, it did very well no matter what. It brought $2,096. But very well shaped and had wonderful dragon masks on it. Uh, I hope you took the time to look at it. All right, and he had a bunch of others that we're going to go through some of them. And then you have this one with the Arabic script, a low incense burner, uh, probably later Ming Dynasty, but nice quality, good patina on it and all that good stuff. And it brought $2,423, which I think was a little bit low for these. These Arabic scrons, uh, Arabic uh, script uh, pieces can do uh, sometimes four, five, six thousand. So this might have been one of the one of the good buys. The seller's name is White Crow. That's who it is. And uh, he gets good bronzes. He seems to know something about them. And uh, then on to this, the pair of Famille Rose uh, jars, uh, latter 19th century, um, with, with these uh, later wooden lids on them, uh, not unusual. And uh, here's a picture of the, uh, the bottom and so forth. They had been drilled as lamps. They had, I think was, they were Kangxi marks on it. Hold on, let me take a look. Uh, oh, they're upside down. I love it when they do that. Um, Chin Lung marks. All right, and um, but they're not Chin Lung. They're uh, 19th century, and uh, they were very nice, and they did uh, just fine. They brought $782 for the pair, but very pretty, very decorative, and um, not bad for a pair of jars that have been drilled out. All right. And then there was this, this interesting pair of sort of mallet form vases that were, um, came with, um, attached with their own stands. And they didn't, they, these were not detachable from those stands. They were just part of them. And I thought these were quite unusual. I think they were latter 19th century, early, maybe even early 20th century. Uh, had a repair on one of the handles. There's a picture of the bottom. But uh, very nice quality and unusual form. I like the fact that they, had a, they were an unusual form a lot. I thought that was great. And uh, they br did well. They brought $1,026. That's, that's not bad at all. Those are nice. Those are good-looking things. And uh, then over to this, this Famille Rose planter, uh, a beautiful one, actually. This was a good-looking planter. Here's a picture of the bottom, very typical. It was missing its tray, and more, very likely had a tray. These always had trays with them. But the decoration on this planter was really good. Here you have some uh, folks outside, scholars outside at a table. Uh, looks like they're getting ready. To, they're just talking, but sometimes you see them at these tables, and they're playing Go or some sort of a game. There's a boy in the foreground serving tea. 
one of those sort of idyllic uh, Chinese uh, scenes. And here you have one of a scholar with a book uh, uh, looking out over a, uh, a, a gentleman, a fisherman with his, uh, with his pole walking along a, uh, a jetty of some kind next to a rice paddy with a, some water beside him. And it's sort of these are these those idealized si scenes of uh, daily Chinese life. But this was a good planter, a nice, nice one. And uh, it did very well. It brought $2,550. And it even had a hairline on the base, but it still did well. It did, did, did fine. All right. Those, those have become incredibly popular. And then on to this was that very large, this was our friend Tony over in, uh, in France had this. He had some nice things up. He's, got some, he's also got a good bronze up this week. Um, uh, I don't think it'll do what this one did, but this was a really interesting one of a, of a large figure uh, holding uh, some sort of a joss stick or, 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 or a lamp holder of some kind because there were cups that you could put uh, uh, joss sticks or something in. But look how big this thing was. Here's a wine bottle. All right. Um, we do the same thing here when we do pictures. We put wine bottles in them. And uh, here it is, okay. Uh, it had a, a, a sort of a, a, a scowling figure on it and a hat and all this. But it was a handsome bronze. We thought it would do very well. When we first saw it, it wasn't up to anything. And it ended up bringing $24,988. But this was a very unusual uh, uh, lamp. Uh, and very large, and uh, you think back, but if you follow bronzes, you won't be able to think of one that you've seen quite like this. I, I couldn't. Um, I've seen smaller ones, but nothing on this size. This was a big one. Um, how big was this thing? Yeah, 55 centimeters tall. Okay, this was a big, big thing. It was just a, a you know, a few inches under two feet tall. Uh, quite a thing, quite a thing. And it brought $24,988. And I hope the bidder pays for it, okay? It was a good thing. If he doesn't, he's crazy because it's an unusual object. And this was back to something that White Crow had. Again, this was that nice uh, 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 Yuan Ming Dynasty pear-shaped bottle um, with arrow handles. I think it's probably Ming, but... Um, a good one, nice classic style to it, and uh, these these bronzes still, I think, are under the market, com considering what they are and how beautiful they are. And it brought eleven hundred and eighteen dollars, which is right about right for these. They they could bring anywhere from eight hundred to fifteen hundred, uh, but that was a nice one and a good surface on it. Surfaces are critical on bronzes, okay, especially the the real early ones. And then on to this was that it was that nice big pair. We featured these. The Republican period vases. We also were featured the, uh, uh, the the big standing bronze and the one I just we just talked about the pear shaped piece, but we featured these last week because these are these are true Republican uh, porcelains, uh, nice big ones, beautifully decorated all the way around. <clears throat> it had the big these big applied bat handles, which were very fashionable in the in the Republic period. You see these on the rims of plates. You see them on uh, large vases. And all kinds of, they're often applied. Uh, there are slab form square vases. They made a, quite a few of them in the Republican period that they also put them on. But the decoration is quite good. The horses, oh, there are my horses, are beautifully done. Uh, nice scene, and those, those, these, these, these horse scenes, uh, as you know, first became very popular with uh, Giuseppe Castiglione depicting them in this way. He was the the French Jesuit that was a favorite of the uh, Yongchen and Qinlong courts, and um, and since then Chinese artists have used them. And then on the other side is is, is sort of the, the quintessential uh, Chinese domestic scene in the in sort of tranquil, idyllic. Uh, you know, uh, mountain setting with pine trees and rocky outcropping. Just good package, nice package. And these lamps were drilled, okay? These these were drilled as lamps at some point, probably in the 20s and uh, or 30s when they were almost new, I suspect. And they still did fine. They brought $1,525. Were they not drilled, they probably would have brought up around 5000 all right? But they, they drilled right through the blue, the blue square seal mark on the bottoms, all right? And then on to this, the, the uh, rank badge. This was a wonderful rank badge. Uh, uh, first half of the 19th century based on the colors and the drawing. Uh, b beautiful quality all the way around. <clears throat> here it is. Here it is some more of it. And uh, as I recall, there was a slight pull somewhere on it maybe or something. Let me take a look. 
Mm, no, it was just a crease. Okay, all right, never mind. Uh, and but this was a beautiful example, very artistically rendered. It was very painterly, and uh, uh, collectors seemed to want to go after it, and they paid twelve hundred and seventy-five dollars for it. But I think that was a nice buy because this was a genuine, uh, good old example. Uh, the colors, uh, the colors on silks um, uh, often fade out a lot, and the, the the colors on this were still very good. And I think it was dirty. Um, you could have, you can get these professionally cleaned. Do not try to clean these yourself; you'll ruin them. Uh, but you can get them cleaned professionally. Um, um, you know, uh, if you know somebody that does good hand cleaning of uh, rare textiles, all right. They basically clean them like neckties, but um, don't give it to your dry cleaner to do. They will ruin it. Okay. And then um, that's about it for last week. There were a lot of things that uh, that seemed to do well. The market still seems to be pretty strong. And now that the uh, China trade deal is going to be wrapped up, I suspect, within the next three or four weeks, maybe a month and a half. Um, you're going to see uh, uh, things go back more to normal with uh, buyers in mainland China. Uh, right now, it's a little difficult because of the politics, but uh, um, I think you're going to see a, a relaxation once this is all resolved. All right, and then on to uh, what's coming up next week. Our friends at the Ceramics and Collectibles have some interesting pieces up. There's, they have two of these dishes up, these very interesting things with the uh, with the sort of palm fronds and seals on them, transitional period bowl, the one lead Tian Chi period. Uh, nice quality bowls, though. They have good things. <clears throat> and then there's this, this uh, 19th century uh, bronze with the lappets around the neck. There's some calligraphy and script on it, uh, incised with um, uh, figures. But the incising on these is quite good. Uh, we'll have them in the newsletter. You want to check them out. The work on these is quite good. Uh, it has a uh, sort of a, a messed up chin lung mark on the bottom, but it is. I think I think that's pretty sure what that says. And uh, they're up. This is up. It's got three days to go. This closes on Monday. It's up to three hundred thirty-three dollars, and you can pretty much expect it to get up to uh, um, oh, pr probably you know upwards of a thousand or so dollars. But it's a nice bronze. Good looking bronze. Um, nice surface. And uh, then there's this, this nice uh, Chinese Amari square tea caddy on stand, 18th century, probably Kung Chi period by the looks of it. Uh, but good color, interesting pattern, and it's a, it's a nice package. I love the stand. I love the little silk stand they gave it before they exported it. All right, and it's only up to $14. This has um, uh, nine days to go. It just came on, uh, I think this came online last night. All right. And then there's this screen, one of these uh, late 19th century Famille Rose folding screens. Uh, they put these together for export, uh, most of them uh, in the late 19th century, and they would do these little uh, sort of interior scenes with script and so forth. You can see they gave it the little red seal export stamps uh, when this was shipped out of the country. With, when these were not yet that old, they would stamp these up and let them be exported um, in the last 40 years. Here's a picture of the back of it, okay? Pretty dingy, dingy looking, but uh, that'll all clean up. But these are nice. And uh, this will probably bring, I don't know, 12 to 15. What size is it? I'll, before I say what it'll bring, I should probably look at the size. Um, each panel is 31 by 6 inches, so 2 or 3 feet. Should bring $1,500 pretty easily, I would think. And it's up to 220 It closes on Sunday. Uh, but it's a nice screen. The shipping on it's a little high because of the size, but not outrageous, actually. From from uh, New Mexico to here, it's uh, in Gloucester, which is clear across the country. Uh, my shipping is showing up as 95 bucks, which I think is pretty reasonable because uh, these, these are tough to pack and tough to ship. Um, I, we've had these in the past ourselves, and we dread the day we have to ship them because there's a lot of work that goes into shipping these safely so you don't crack those panels because they're only, you know, uh, they're less than a half an inch thick. And they crack very easily. And then on to this, the spinach and egg kung shi bowl. This is a nice bowl, all right? Um, there's a, a picture of the bottom, and it looks to be a mark and period one. Um, nice, nice spinach and egg pattern all over it, all right? I don't see any repairs. Good clean bowl, all right? And uh, it is up to uh, $2,420. It closes on Sunday. Uh, should end up in the $4,000 range. Uh, sometimes these can go a little more. Uh, but it's a it's a good one, and if you have a spinach and egg collectors chasing it, uh, it's gonna it's gonna do just fine. Okay, and that is something that Egmont Horn has up. And then there are this this particular Miglari's got this up. This is this very nice Famille Rose uh, tall vase with um, a gilt lion uh, or lion mask handles and rings on it. They run all the way around, 
And uh, it's up to eight, $942. This closes tomorrow if you want to take a look at this. It'll be in the newsletter. It's good size, 44 centimeters. So it's about a foot and a half tall. Uh, but but nice nice condition, good colors, and, and, and good quality decoration. Uh, if you if you take the time to really look at it, you'll see that the uh, the gilding, for example, in these uh, in these cash symbols is still nice and uh, nice and present. It's not worn off anywhere. Uh, always look for wear to the gilt. All right, there's a little wear on the high points of the rings, which is not unusual. Uh, that sort of just happens because of their their exposure. Uh, the gilding in the ladies' hair is all well intact, and the tracery worked under the butterflies and so forth is all there. So this is a good pair, a good vase. It's up to 942. I ought to get up to about 1500, 1800, somewhere in there. Uh, so check that out. That's a nice, that's a nice vase if you like Famille Rose vases. And then this is this very unusual 18th century Famille Rose uh, reticulated rim uh, dish. Uh, nice looking thing. And it's funny because it's it's done in a, in a very uh, much in the Chinese taste. But these reticulated plates are typically done for Western uh, markets for exports uh, where they would have a, a, some sort of serving vessel sitting in it. This doesn't look like uh, by the surface as though anything ever sat on it really. It's in good shape. This one tiny area of gilt loss there. But uh, overall, this is a nice shape. The, the bamboo trees are all uh, outlined in red and then gilt, gilt washed in, and it's in good shape. Um, there's some minor g losses to the gilt highlights around here, um, but that's, that's not bad at all. This is a very pretty plate. All right, and um, it's an 18th century one, Qinlung period, uh, judging by the, the texture of the porcelain, but very finely painted. And this is up to $132. It closes tomorrow. Uh, you know, you, you can sort of expect it to get up, uh, you know, around the $300 range, plus or minus a little, depending on how much you love it. All right. But uh, nice things. And there's some other things we found, too, this week that we'll be putting in. Uh, we were, I was going over the list early this morning, um, having my coffee, and uh, looking at some of the stuff that's coming up and uh, some good things. All right, so check out uh, this week and also check out Katawiki. I've had some very good things lately, actually. <clears throat> and um, you want to you take a look at the, it'll be It's on the newsletter page at the bottom. We've added the Katawiki stuff to the bottom of the newsletter page. So when you come down, you go through the eBay stuff, and you go right into the Katawiki material, all right? And uh, that's about it for the week. Um, uh, as I said, we're working on the video uh, for the Asian art auction results, and we've got the uh, catalogs this week. We uploaded uh, for the Hong Kong sales coming up, including the Chen Men Lu sale. So check out the catalogs. I will add the link below here so you can go look at it. Um, but there's some uh, amazing stuff, <laughs> really amazing. There's a Islamic uh, blue and white uh, metalwork form. Uh, it's very early. It's being sold. Some other things. So if you like these, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Come over to bitamount.com and um, uh, sign up for the weekly newsletter and, you know, join the forum. Have some fun. All righty. Have a fabulous weekend, and uh, we'll be talking with you next week. All righty. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.